The Seattle Kraken have forced a Game 7 in their exciting series with the Dallas Stars. Erica Ayala of Locked on Kraken is here to talk about how they got to a Game 7 and what they have to do to win it. All that and more on today's Locked on NHL podcast. Your Locked on NHL, your daily podcast on the National Hockey League. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome, everybody, to the Monday edition of the Locked On NHL Podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. want to thank everyone for making Locked On NHL your first listen every day. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. And now you can also find us on SiriusXM on the SXM app. It is my pleasure to welcome back to the show a familiar face for Locked On NHL viewers and listeners the host of Locked On Kraken and, of course, our bi-weekly contributor with the Women's Hockey Spotlight, Erica Ayala. And Erica, big win in Game 6. Oh, for sure. Thanks for having me on, Gil. Uh, brought our little mascot here, Biscuit. Uh, for those who've been watching with our Locked on Kraken live uh, watch-alongs, they know all about Biscuit. But, yes, not just a do-or-die must uh, win game for Seattle to extend the season to at least Monday in game seven. But we needed this f- for morale, for just showing the entire league that no, our run is not a fluke. And we got back to Kraken hockey in game six. All right. So for those people who don't follow the Kraken religiously, what is Kraken hockey? Well, I'll start with this because in the playoffs, Kraken hockey has been a solid performance, a stellar performance from Philip Grubauer. We have talked, Gil, whether it's been on the Locked on NHL show or just in passing, that Philip Grubauer, a little bit of a wild card coming in. But we've gotten a solid goaltending performance from Philip Grubauer um, and Seattle Kraken hockey in front of Grubauer is all about being strong on the forecheck. It's about playing aggressive. Once again, the Seattle Kraken scored first in the game throughout our playoffs. I believe the stat was like 23 and 0 when we score first. And we got back to that, that just tenacious by committee style of hockey. Yeah, and and it's paid off. And, you know, I've got to ask about this. A three-point game, two goals for former Islander Jordan Eberle. He seems to have been a great pickup for this Kraken team. Absolutely. I've been high on Eberle since the expansion draft, since he came to the franchise an immediate leader. It's no secret that the Seattle Kraken struggled last season. And oftentimes it was either Jordan Eberle or Jaden Schwartz on those really tough nights that were brought out to talk to media. They're the leaders in the team on the team. They're the veterans and Eberle would give it to us pretty, you know, pretty real. And it wouldn't sugarcoat things saying that there was a lot that the team needed to do. He'd say, oftentimes we need to play to win and not to play, not to lose. And again, thinking about this game six, we got back to playing to win. And those are foundational pieces that Eberly brought. But talking about the game, he was so active in finding the puck in the offensive zone. The Seattle Kraken have been playing below the goal line and, and reloading a lot more, being able to find uh, the puck, win those 50-50 battles. And Jordan Eberle, for whatever reason, Dallas could not find him streaking down the slot, and that made a huge difference. I do want to give some stick taps also to Jaden Schwartz, who's another one of our veteran leaders. I just mentioned him as well. But he had a massive block that then led to a breakaway chance on one of Eberle's goals. I believe it was that that empty netter to seal the deal. And so the, the combination of our leadership, Yanni Gord got the, the, the scoring started. I said we got the first goal that came from Yanni Gord. The determination of that trio has been fantastic. And those are your veterans. So yeah, absolutely. Another thing that worked really well in game six, special teams, 
power play striking twice. How important is that for the Kraken? It's huge because the power play, I mean, on Locked on Kraken, we and the everydayers know this, Gil, we were just kind of like, I think we got to give up on the power play in the, in the playoffs. <laughs> Let's just, you know, say no, no thank you, we don't need it, and just play at even strength. That's kind of where we were. So to see the power play pick up, huge. But also the penalty kill. We got back to, as Allison Lucan or a lot of us in women's hockey say, we got back to the power kill, right? We got back to taking command of the game, even when down a skater. And that is cracking hockey, baby, as John Forslund would say. But also it's just that aggressive. It's the tenacity. We don't want our backs against the wall. We want to command the game. And we did that tonight. So game seven coming up Monday on the road in Dallas. What is the one biggest key for the Kraken to pull off the upset? It's same mentality. You go in just as you came into game six. Now, yes, it'll be a different crowd. It'll be a hostile crowd, especially it being a game seven. But the Seattle Kraken know that they have played well on the road. We were able to lock up a game seven series against the defending champions on the road. So we've been there before undefeated in game sevens, as someone in our live chat said. So, But you really just have to focus on the energy, the effort, and the communication that you had in game six and transfer that over because game four and five were not great for Seattle. We lost that edge. I think we were a very fatigued team. Again, we went the distance with Colorado. So what I'm going to be looking for, Gil, is to see if they get a good performance from Philip Grubauer. We talked about that. Another thing I'm looking for is to see if they can strike first. They've had so much success in the postseason when they get the first goal. And I would love to see them score in bunches. We score by committee. We've had now 16 plus different goal scorers um, and so many players also contributing with assists. We need all of that. It has to be by committee. It has to get done early. And Philip Grubauer has to be solid in that. Do you think this team is getting into Jake Ottinger's head at all? You know, that's a really great question, Gil. He did get pulled in game six, and we know that I guess it was uh, back in game three. Not a great game for him either. So it could very well be. This is a team where when we punch, we punch in bunches. That can't be easy for a goaltender going up against that. But I will say this, and I've said this about Philip Grubauer in the past, Jake Ottinger has also stymied the Seattle Kraken. And so if I'm going to be a little bit non, you know, non-biased and non-partial, what I would say is that I, if I were Dallas, I'd focus a little bit more on clearing bodies. That was honestly something that Seattle hasn't done well in this series either because Ottinger, when he sees the puck, he's for the most part, more often than not giving Dallas everything that they need. And we even heard that in one of the, one of the interviews with Leah Hextall in the middle of the game. So I really do think that's what Dallas is going to want to do we saw them get a little bit physical as they started getting a little frustrated later in the game and they've had success playing that physical game so I'm very curious to see what happens if you're Seattle you want to go in same mentality as game six but you also have to know without a doubt that Dallas is going to come out swinging and maybe literally (laughs) <laughs> Maybe literally. I, I'm telling you that first goal, like you said, going to be very important in game seven. Erica, why don't you tell our viewers and our listeners where they could find the podcast and where they could find you on social media? Sure thing. Well, thanks, everyone. You can hop on the Seattle Kraken train by watching us over on YouTube on the Locked on Kraken channel. I've mentioned it a few times, but we do a live reaction kind of watch party situation on YouTube. So you can join us there. And just as you mentioned at the top of the show, Gil, you can find us on Sirius SXM, any of your audio platforms. And of course, every day, Monday through Friday on YouTube. All right. Erica, always a pleasure. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Gil. Today's episode is brought to you by a product I literally use every day, AG1 by Athletic Greens. Maybe you're like me, you want to be healthy and eat well, but it's easier said than done. That's no longer the case with AG1. With one delicious scoop of AG1 and a glass of water each day, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, and adoptogens to help you start your day right. 
This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, immune system, energy, recovery, focus, and aging, all these things. AG1 costs you less than $3 a day. You're investing in your health, and it's cheaper than your cold brew habit. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. And to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network. That's athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance.